Hey, welcome back to the workshop. For today's project, I'm going to be testing heat treating stainless steel with ATP 641 anti-scale compound. Lately, I've been doing up a lot of knives in this uh, AEBL stainless, which I really like. It's a good tough steel, it makes great knives. But I'm heat treating it in a propane forge with no stainless steel foil pouch. That means that this steel, uh, in the process of heat treating, gets really, really bad decarb and forge scale all over it, which uh, is a real pain in the butt to remove. So I'm hoping that by coating it with this compound before I heat treat it, um, the knife is going to come out much cleaner. Let's find out. ATP 641 is a water-based, high-temperature, protective, anti-scale coating. I don't actually know what it's made of, and uh, I'm going to try to look that up later. We'll see what I can find out. But uh, this stuff is manufactured by Advanced Technical Products Supply uh, out of Westchester, Ohio. One of the interesting things to note here is uh, this is actually a plastic can. Um, I wonder if this stuff is somewhat reactive with metal and uh, has to be transported in a plastic can. I guess that would make sense if it bonds to the metal. All right, looks pretty soupy. I think, uh, uh, yep, got to stir it up. The stuff doesn't come with any instructions. I suppose I should go look on ATP's website and see what it says. But my assumption is that all I have to do is stir this up and uh, paint a thin layer on the knife and we should be good to go. To be honest, it seems a lot like a fine grade of refractory cement, but I imagine it's not, at least not entirely. I've tried to use refractory cement as an anti-scale compound in the past, and uh, for me that didn't actually work out very well, so I'm expecting this will do better. Okay, uh, it's been about five minutes. This seems pretty thoroughly mixed. I'm going to go ahead and paint this onto my blades and then set them aside to dry for a while. Hopefully this stuff doesn't eat my foam brush. Guess we'll find out. Sticks to the steel pretty well, that's good. I did clean these blades before I did this, but uh, I didn't clean them real well. Hopefully they don't really need it. Alright, I'll leave a little bit uh, exposed back here at the tang. That'll give us a place where we can uh, see, you know, see, we'll hopefully see the difference between the coated and uncoated. And also, I need a place to clamp this down. Now both of these blades were finished up to a uh, 120 grit belt finish and that seems to be a good uh, grippy surface for this compound. It adheres to the blades really well. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, that being said, I have no idea how thick I'm supposed to apply this stuff. So I'm just kind of giving it one good solid coat and hopefully that's enough. Uh, I'm told that a little bit of this stuff goes a long way, and uh, I guess we're going to find out. Okay, I'm going to set these aside to dry for about an hour or so, then uh, come back and see how they look. Okay, so I checked these at one hour, and they still seemed a little bit wet. I let them dry for another hour, and at two hours they seem pretty dry. 
it's a little bit dark here. Maybe it's maybe it could dry out a little bit more. But I think uh, I'm kind of getting impatient. It's time to go ahead and put this in the forge and see what happens. The coating on this Santoku was a little thinner. It's uh, it's come out really thin, really smooth, and really dry. My heat treat recipe for AEBL goes like this. Step one, slowly heat to 1940 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of about 10 minutes. Step two, heat quickly to 1975 degrees Fahrenheit and hold there for 15 minutes. Step three, quench in preheated canola oil where the oil has been preheated to about 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Step four, cool your blades in a bath of dry ice and acetone, if you can get it, for at least one hour. If you can't get that, because dry ice can sometimes be hard to obtain, you can at least cool your knife for an hour or two in your household freezer if you have nothing else. Step five, temper your blades in a toaster oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for two cycles of two hours each. This should result in approximately Rockwell 60 to 62 hardness. Now, for you professional bladesmiths and knife steel purists out there, I should also point out that uh, while this heat treatment does result in a successfully hardened knife, this process does not extract every possible ounce of performance out of the steel. Using an electric temperature controlled kiln would be better, and I would recommend that over what I'm doing for anyone who can afford it. But my method has the advantage of being reasonably successful and just about as dirt cheap as anyone can do at home with junk equipment. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Okay, for better or for worse, this is uh, done. A lot of the anti-scale compound blew off the knife when I stuck it in the quenching oil. Uh, that was expected. I figured that was going to happen. Uh, next, I'm going to hit it with the wire wheel and see if this comes off and uh, see how clean it is. Normally when I do this, the forge scale is so hard and so thick, the wire wheel barely touches it and uh, it's got to be removed with a sanding belt or by hand sanding. I'm hoping that uh, this one's going to come out a little cleaner. Okay, well, I'd call that a partial success. Um, there's still a lot of the uh, anti-scale compounds stuck to the knives. That doesn't come off as easy as I would have hoped. Uh, these are still going to need some hand sanding and some cleanup. I will say that they appear to be much cleaner than they would have been had I not used the compound. So that's good. I'd call this at least a partial success. When I compare the front of the blade, where the uh, anti-scale compound was, to the back of the tang here, where I didn't have any compound, uh, this is definitely kind of scaled in a dark black. And this is still pretty dark, but it's kind of a light gray color. Hopefully that cleans up a little easier. Okay, the next question we have to answer is, were we able to harden the steel? And that's where my hardness testing files come in. I know that the annealed state of this AEBL stainless comes in around Rockwell 40. It's pretty soft. So, this has been hardened, but not tempered yet. It should be pretty hard. I'm going to start at my uh, Rockwell 55 file and see how well it slides. Yep, that one's pretty good. 
think this one's even better. Slides right over that. Doesn't even leave a mark. Let's keep going. How about Rockwell 60? Rockwell 60 file glides right over this. Oh, might have maybe a, a touch softer spot right there. But uh, in general, I'd call hardening a success. The hardest file I've got is Rockwell 65. I don't imagine this steel is harder than that. But we'll see. Nope, see I can definitely feel the Rockwell 65 file still slides a little bit, but it wants to bite and grab. I'd say it's safe to say that I've tempered these up, well hardened these up to somewhere between Rockwell 60 and 65. I'd call that a success. Now I'm going to temper these in the toaster oven, and the final hardness should be somewhere around uh, Rockwell 60 or 61. So I think that's about all the time I've got for this project for today. But uh, what did we learn? Well, ATP 641 anti-scale compound. Does it work? I'd say yes it does. Um, while the knives I treated with it came out a little bit dirtier than I hoped they were going to, they were definitely much easier to clean up after heat treatment than they would have been had I not used the compound. Um, that probably saved me two hours of hand sanding and for 20 bucks worth the compound which is way cheaper than the uh, stainless steel foil and this is a big can. I could do a lot of knives with this. This is going to go a long way. I consider ATP 641 a uh, real success and I'm going to keep using it in the future. So I hope you found that interesting, and I'll be right back here in the workshop with another project just as soon as I can. See you then.